Okay, I gotta tell you, I used to use Google Chrome on all my Androids for plenty of years, but I finally had to call it quits just because it has a bunch of downsides that really most other browsers don't have. I mean, for starters, the ad blocking experience is pretty weak. I mean, yeah, Google has a setting to stop intrusive ads, but let's be honest, it barely works. On top of that, it doesn't support extensions. Uh, there's not much customization going on and it's just packed with a lot of Google's own trackers. So enough was enough. And over the years, I've just tried out a bunch of different browsers and I found a few good ones too. So I figured why not put together a list of some of the best that I've found to really help you improve your browsing experience. Give it a thumbs up too, because finding all of this took some time. Let's kick it off with the newest and honestly, the most unique browser I've ever used yet, Comet from Perplexity, which by the way, is a sponsor for this video. I want to make that very clear. But still, I had full control over my personal thoughts about this browser, so I made sure to include all of the pros and cons about it. This thing is easily the smartest browser on this list because it uses AI in a way that genuinely changes how you browse. It can literally do stuff that no other browser I've tried can even come close to. I mean, sure, it can search using AI, kind of like Google's AI mode for search, which is what Perplexity's answer engine is known for, but the wild part that really surprised me is that Comet AI can also literally take over your whole screen and start browsing for you. It's pretty insane. Like you give it a task and it just does it. For example, let's talk shopping. Imagine you're on some site ready to check out, but before you do, you can just tell Comet's assistant to literally search for the best promo codes for that product on the web and just plug them into the promo code text box for you. And just like that, it won't just give you a list, it will even start trying all the codes it finds, plugging them right into the promo text box to see which ones actually work. Now I'll be 100% real, it doesn't always plug them directly in for you depending on the site, but it does always provide you with the codes that should work. It's really incredible and it saved me a good amount of cash too. Or maybe you're checking out a product on a specific website and the reviews look fake and super limited. Instead of opening a bunch of tabs to fact check it, you can just ask Comet if people have reported any major issues with that product anywhere online. And a few seconds later, it'll give you the complete rundown of all the downsides of that item you're trying to buy. And the best part that I really like too is that when you ask this assistant to do certain stuff, you also don't have to sit there and wait for it to finish. You can literally open a different tab and then the AI will keep working in the background to finish what it started. And you can even start another task too on top of that. So it's great with multitasking. Here's another one, finding files. Let's say you need a manual or a file from a website. Like you just bought a new pair of nothing headphones, toss the physical manual out like we all do and now you don't know how to pair them. So instead of digging around the website yourself, you can just tell Comet AI to find the PDF manual for you while you're already on the Nothing website and it'll instantly find it for you to download right then and there. And sure, you could just search on Google, but it's honestly a bit faster to do it with the assistant. It's also amazing for searching within a website. Like imagine you're on a site like 9to5Google and you want to find their article on the latest Android 16 update, but you just can't seem to track it down you can just tap on the assistant icon and say something like this. Take me to the article about the latest Android 16 update. I've opened the article about Android 16 in your browser. If you need further assistance or more information, feel free to let me know. As you can see, it literally jumped me to that Android 16 section in just a few seconds. And from there, within that article, I can even ask follow-up questions, like things like, uh, what's the biggest new changes found within this update? or which phones are getting this update. It really lets you dive deep. And literally my overall favorite feature about this browser is that it even works on video platforms like YouTube. Like let's say there's a long video that you don't want to fully watch, like an Apple Keynote, and you only care about one specific part. Maybe you just want to learn about the new iPhones. You can just straight up tell Comet to find the part in the latest Apple Keynote where they talk about the new iPhones and it'll scan through a ton of videos and jump you right to that exact moment. That way you don't have to start scrubbing through and you can save yourself a bunch of time. It's also perfect for creators too because it lets you look for specific clips to put in your full video. Plus the crazy part too is that Comet AI even works on live streams. So let's say you just joined a live stream, you can ask it what you missed or you can even ask any other questions too. It's pretty great. 
And it doesn't stop there. There are a ton of other crazy things that you can do with this browser. I just wanted to give you a few examples. Trust me, there's way more. Now let's talk about privacy and security because I know that is a concern for people when they hear about AI and automation. I dug into Perplexity's blog that breaks down how they handle the security and privacy, which I'll also link down below. And here are the big points. When it comes to your data, they stated that all your sensitive info, like your passwords, account details, credit card info, all that stays on your device. And the only thing that goes to their servers is your open tab and browsing history, which is really needed to complete any AI requests. So you're pretty much good there. And yeah, the browser will use your activity to give you relevant answers to search queries, but that's honestly what most tech brands do anyway. Google Chrome, for instance, takes it even further and uses your personal info to show you personalized ads. And even your own Android device already does that too. So it's not really unusual to see. And you don't even need to sign in too. You can still use it without needing to sign in and be completely anonymous. You just won't be able to use the AI voice assistant, but you can still use the AI by typing out what you'd like. So yeah, even though it's not the most privacy driven browser out there, that doesn't necessarily mean that privacy isn't on the top of their mind. Plus, if you prefer, later on in this video, I'm going to show you more privacy driven browsers that don't primarily focus on AI capabilities like Comet does. That way, there's an option for everyone. Oh, and it has all the basics covered too. I mean, it has a strong ad blocker, which by the way, has a nice looking bar in the new tab section that shows you exactly how many ads it's blocked over time. Uh, it's really nice. It also has an incognito mode, article summarization, uh, it'll translate any website for you, uh, dark mode even for websites that don't support it, and a lot more. But overall, this is genuinely the most modern browser that I've used in a long time. One that actually makes browsing better, not just different. Now, if you want something that feels exactly like Google Chrome, but fixes most of the stuff that people don't like about it, like unnecessary features or trackers, check out Chromite. It's free, it's open source, and it's built on Chromium. So the whole UI and overall experience looks pretty much identical to Chrome. The big difference though is that Chromite just strips out all the Google trackers and the invasive stuff that's happening in the background. It's super privacy focused. It even adds a few perks of its own as well. Like you get a super powerful ad blocking engine and it even lets you pick and choose which filter list you want to use. It also supports more Chrome flags than usual. So you can do things like keep videos playing in the background while you switch tabs. And since it's always updated to the latest Chromium version, you get all the newest Chrome features too. Now, just a heads up, because the developer has kept it so lean for privacy, it can feel a little bare bones. For instance, the new tab page, it isn't really that informative or as attractive as the regular one on Google Chrome. Uh, but still, it's a great Google Chrome alternative that I've used for years. Now, if you're more of a Firefox person, then you should check out Iron Fox. It's basically a stripped down open source version of Firefox. It's really privacy driven because they've taken out almost all the trackers and useless features and have really tightened up all the privacy settings, but you still get that classic Firefox interface. The best part is that you can even still install pretty much any Firefox extension that you want, which is a massive plus that most of the browsers don't offer, by the way. The extensions that I use, for example, is uBlock Origins to block ads, Dark Reader to turn websites darker for my eyes at night, clear URLs to clean up tracking and links. It's great. Again, though, since it's a simplified version, you might find one or two features from the official Firefox browser missing. But overall, if you want a browser that supports extensions, is super private, and isn't tied to Google, Ironfox is a solid choice. As an alternative, if you want a Firefox fork that's even more privacy focused and a bit more feature packed, there's Web Libre. It's extremely similar to Ironfox, but it just leans more into usability. Like you get tab containers, uh, optional Tor routing per container, and even an on-device search engine built right in. The only thing that I didn't like is that it just didn't feel as smooth to use. Uh, Iron Fox, for example, felt a lot more quicker and the animations were a lot smoother, so it does need a bit more polish. That's the only reason why I'd choose Iron Fox over this one. Then there's Vivaldi. You're gonna love this one if you're the kind of person who loves to tweak and customize every little thing. It's based on Chromium too, so it feels a little familiar right away, but it gives you way more control than Chrome ever could. You can totally rearrange the whole interface. Like you can group your tabs together and have them be stacked to manage a bunch at once. 
You can change how the toolbar looks, uh, hide buttons that you don't need, add the ones that you do, adjust the spacing for tabs. Uh, you can even switch up the whole theme so the browser actually matches your style. It honestly feels more like a powerful desktop browser than a simple mobile one. And if you have a foldable device, I especially recommend you use this one because those tabs at the top really take advantage of that bigger screen. And on top of all that control, it still packs in features like a built-in ad blocker, tracker blocker, a notes tool, a screenshot tool for even capturing the entire page quickly, and a really solid download manager. The only downside is that with all these features, it can feel a little heavy on older phones, but if you want full control and a browser that's both powerful and really super flexible, Vivaldi is definitely one of the best out there. Another awesome one is Soul Browser. This browser can look a little simple at first, but when you start to use it, you'll start to realize that it's absolutely packed with a ton of features. The standout for me is the built-in media support. I mean, it has its own video and audio player with a bunch of different controls, even the option to download videos or music straight from almost any web page and play them in the background in a little floating window as well, like picture-in-picture -picture mode. No other apps needed too. It's also got its own ad blocker too, which is really solid. And you can even add your own filter list if you want to get even stricter. It also has a nicely organized downloads page. You can block any elements within a web page. It has text to speech to read you entire web pages too. You can now unlock the full capabilities of Apple AirPods on Android. Gesture controls, a dark mode that actually works across almost every website and a lot more. You can even lock the entire browser behind a passcode or fingerprint if you want that extra privacy. The only real downsides that I didn't find is support for extensions, uh, the interface also isn't the prettiest, and the settings can feel a bit overwhelming because there's just so much stuff in there. But if you want a super flexible, feature-packed browser, especially for handling media, Soul Browser is easily a great choice. Anyway, if you want to keep it going, just tap this video to check out the best tech you'll actually find useful or this one to see the best apps you can download right now. Obviously, there are a ton more browsers, so leave your favorites in the comments, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!